Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Today, I'm giving you a freshman report as Alabama enters the bye week, coming to you on Wednesday, November 4th from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we start out with Javon Baker. A lot of people have been asking, where is Javon Baker? When is he going to get more snap counts? When are we going to see more um, of his production on the field after Jalen Waddle was injured with a season-ending ankle injury? Well, look, I think Slade Bolden is the perfect fit for Alabama at the slot position. Now, that doesn't mean that Javon Baker is not going to get to play. It's just that I think that we're just going to have to be a little bit more patient to when we do see Javon Baker. Against Tennessee, he played in two snaps. Against Mississippi State, he played in 11 snaps. So for a player that we're all excited to see, he only has 13 snaps on the season. I've heard that he's better on the outside as a wide receiver because of his physicality. I think he's a versatile wide receiver, so I think we just have to be patient. Right now, Alabama has Devontae Smith, John Mechie, and Slade Bolden in the rotation as those first-team wide receivers, so let's stay tuned on Javon Baker. But as we've talked about plenty of times, he certainly has a skill set to make an impact for Alabama when his name is called on. So 13 snaps going into the bye week. I think it's a little less than what we thought we were going to see in terms of overall production. But I think Baker certainly has that talent. So I think it's just the case of staying patient and kind of riding this out. And then when he is called on, watch for Baker to make a splash. All right, next up, we're going to talk about quarterback Bryce Young. A lot of people are very excited about this five-star quarterback coming into the season. And I really want to see a larger sample size from Bryce Young before we make, um, you know, a a real assessment about his ability. Now, Now, I think... You know, just straight up. I mean, the guy has it from everything that I gathered from the intel that I gathered behind the scenes. I mean, this guy does an incredible job at practice, working really hard on his skill set. And I think the chances that he's had, I mean, he really hasn't had that many opportunities this season. I mean, you look at kind of his production chart right now. He's eight of 15 with 84 yards, came into that game against Missouri that was late in the game. Um, you know, and he tried to get something going and he had that fumble. And then we saw him against Texas A&M and just three snaps, really scrap time. But I think the game that I kind of point to is the game against Tennessee. Played in 14 snaps, came in with the first team offense. I saw a lot of confidence from him. His overall grade on pro football focus during that game was 83.9. He was three of five passing, connected with John Mechie twice, big time throws. Really liked what I saw from Tennessee. So, you know, Overall, I want to see more production. I mean, right now, like I said, he's only thrown the football 15 times. Um, we did see him against Mississippi State. He was 0 for 2 with the fumble. Um, so, so let's be patient on Bryce Young. But I'm really excited to see when he gets more of an opportunity. And who knows? I mean, maybe he'll get his name called on, um, you know, later on in the future. But I think right now it's clearly Mac Jones' team, which is fine. So you just be patient with Bryce Young. Let's let him develop. Continue to get him reps. And he's going to provide something that, you know, other quarterbacks don't have. That's an escapability factor, an ability to, you know, make plays, an ability to rise up and, um, you know, really excited to continue to track his development. Next up, we're talking about Treshawn Holden. Really haven't got to see too much of Treshawn in this first year. He played two snaps against Tennessee and he's played in 11 snaps uh, against Mississippi State. So 13 snaps overall, kind of similar to Javon Baker, another guy eager to get onto the field, but just hasn't got that opportunity just yet. Christian Story, um, another guy who came in as a true freshman defensive back, very productive at the high school level, just hasn't seen the field right now. Now, look, when these freshmen don't get onto the field, don't just write them off. I mean, it's it's a depth chart situation. These guys have to be patient. They have to understand that there's guys in front of them. So I know in the world of college football and kind of, you know, when we look at the the recruiting rankings, if these guys don't play immediately, you're like, man, this dude doesn't have it. That's not the case. There's clearly someone above them that is better, that knows the system better. So, you know, with Trayshawn Holden, with Christian Story, with whoever, Javon Baker, you got to wait. I mean, even though these guys are tremendous at the high school level, they're coming in with some of the best college football players in the country. So you got to wait, you got to be patient, ride the process out. How about the play of Malachi Moore? I think if you're giving out freshman of the year through the midway point, Malachi Moore is truly the freshman of the year. And a, a real pleasant surprise. I mean, not in the fact that we didn't think he was going to be talented. I mean, my goodness, starting at the star position for Alabama and not only starting, I mean, his overall play has been phenomenal and just, you know, such a, He's a player that really plays opportunistic. I mean, let's rewind to that game against Georgia 
where he started against the Bulldogs, 55 snaps, had an overall grade of 71.5, his tackle grade 76.5, recorded two tackles, one interception, he returned 42 yards. He's all over the field, right? And then we fast forward to the game against Tennessee, uh, played in 66 snaps, 83.1 overall grade, which was the highest grade on defense, 91.6 grade on run defense. I mean, he can come up, um, he can make the tackle very good in open space, and he plays the ball very well for defensive backs. Then we look at Mississippi State, his overall production, 62 snaps, overall grade of 83.6, 83.5 tackle grade, 83.1 in coverage. Right, He led the team in tackles with eight tackles against the Bulldogs, had one pass breakup, earned freshman uh, of the week honors for a second time in the SEC. And, and I forgot to talk about that forced fumble interception that he had against Tennessee. So very opportunistic. He has that Minka Fitzpatrick vibe. And I think he's versatile enough to play the star, to play safety, play corner. I, I, I mean, completely thrilled about Malachi Moore. And if I'm giving out freshman MVP honors, like I said, at the midway break, he's certainly getting that. How about the play of Brian Branch? I think what we saw last week against Mississippi State is what we're going to see moving forward from Branch. Played in 62 snaps, 75.5 overall grade, 75.77 in pass coverage. He had seven tackles and two pass breakups. Look, this is a guy who has gotten on the field against Ole Miss, against Georgia, against Tennessee, and Alabama gave him 62 snaps against Mississippi State when they knew that Mississippi State was going to throw the football. That tells me that they're very confident in his ability in coverage. Brian Branch, Malachi Moore, those guys, freshmen. And then you look at the guys that are sophomores on Alabama's defense. Christian Harris, Jordan Battle. I mean, so much youth on that defensive side of the ball. It, it's pretty amazing when you look at kind of the long term of Alabama's overall defense. Tyu Jones-Bell, he's a freshman wide receiver. Haven't got to see too much of him either. Only six snaps against Mississippi State. So, you know, you look at him, you look at Javon Baker, you look at Treshawn Holding, those guys are going to just have to be patient for just a little bit to get onto the field, and they're going to get their opportunity sooner than later. But right now, you got to ride it out with Devontae Smith, John Mechie, and Slay Bolden. How about Drew Sanders? And, and make sure to no, notate this. He changed, changed his number from 16 to 20, and we've seen him a lot. Um, saw him in the in the first game of the season against Missouri, and yeah, he got toasted, right? He he didn't cover the, the running back on the outside and gave up a touchdown. And now... Going forward, we've seen him more on the special team side, and I think he's he he's a very productive special teams player. Very good in open space, um, makes good tackles, almost blocked a punt. I, I like the energy that he brings overall, so really like what I see in Drew Sanders. Just haven't seen him too much on the defensive side, but we're seeing a lot of him on special teams. Same with Jace McQuellen, um, guy that came in as a running back, highly touted. This guy has a, lot, a very high skill set. Against Texas A&M, played in three snaps, and against Mississippi State um, this this past week, he had um, he he just played on special teams, but he earned special teams honors. So he's creating value for himself, which is great during that first year when you get to Alabama. Jaquez Robinson, a freshman defensive back, we haven't seen too much of him; hasn't had any snaps just yet. Same with Roydell Williams, a very uh, talented freshman. Um, out of Alabama. I, actually, Royda Williams has seen two snaps overall. That was against Tennessee, but same thing. You know, we haven't seen an overwhelming amount of production. And, and same thing goes for Kyle Edwards, another very talented running back at Alabama. But you look at Alabama's running back depth chart, right? Najee Harris, Brian Robinson, Trey, Trey Sanders. And we're not talking about Trey Sanders because he's a redshirt freshman. This is kind of just a true freshman report that I'm talking about right now. But, you know, similar things with all those running backs that are going to get their opportunity just not right now. I mean, you look at where the running backs are. No need to take Najee out when he's doing his thing. Brian Robinson has been doing well. And redshirt freshman Trey Sanders just had 80 yards rushing, really his breakout game against Tennessee. William Anderson, how about the play of him? I mean, I think coming into that fall training camp, we knew that he was going to be big time. We started to hear whispers about his overwhelming talent. And then we saw him against Missouri, played in 41 snaps and was really just a monster, right? Like, Missouri had no idea what was coming when they were facing Alabama's defense and William Anderson, right? He was in the backfield every single play, it seemed like. And we've gotten a lot of that vibe from him overall. Um, you look at what he did just kind of, you know, throughout the season. I mean, he's he's getting to the backfield every single time. I think Ole Miss had a good game plan for him, really put that tackle on him and did a good job, um, you know, t taking him out of that specific game. But you look at the game against Georgia, 52 snaps, 73.4 overall grade, tackle grade of 
against Mississippi State, 36 snaps, 79.1 overall grade, 76.5 tackle grade. He had five tackles. Uh, against Mississippi State, the leading tacklers, the three out of four were Malachi Moore, Brian Branch, and William Anderson. Those are those are true freshmen, fam. I mean, th- those guys competing at a very high level and already making an impact on the defensive side of the ball. Jackson Bratton, we haven't got to see him yet in action. Same with Darius Robinson. Same with Des Moines Kennedy. Um, all those three guys probably eager to get onto the field at some point. But this is an SEC schedule. And again, I point to the fact that, um, you know, it, it's, it's part of the process. So, I'm not surprised that these guys haven't gotten onto the field. It's just, you know, those guys ahead of him that are going to get those reps right now. Chris Broswell, haven't seen him yet onto the field. So Jackson Bratton, Quindarius Robinson, Des Moines Kennedy, Chris Broswell, all have not seen action during 2020. Tim Smith, how about the play of him? We saw him against Georgia, right? Came in, he had five snaps. Against Tennessee, he had 13 snaps. And then against Mississippi State, I think that was kind of like, you know, we're like, uh uh-oh. This, this dude is getting on the field, and we want to see more of him. 12 snaps, uh, showed plenty of physicality, forced a fumble, recovered a fumble, even got a butt chewing from Nick Saban, right? When, when, when you're playing at that level and Nick Saban's on to you, that's because he sees something in you. So we want to see more Tim Smith, right? Really excited about his play and kind of the trajectory right now of his midseason. I think we might start to see much more of Tim Smith uh, going forward. Seth McLaughlin, haven't got to see him. He's a freshman offensive lineman, um, hasn't got to play yet. Javon Cohen, we've seen him against Tennessee, two snaps, and against Mississippi State, six snaps at the tackle position. Javon Cohen, I think, is a versatile offensive lineman that can play um, guard, and I think he could play tackle, but against Mississippi State came in as a tackle. Damian George, six foot six, 345-pound true freshman offensive tackle. We haven't got to see him yet get onto the field. Jamirian Lathan, um, we've got to see him against Mississippi State. That was the first time he played this season in three snaps. Big boy, six foot three, two hundred and you know eighty five, three hundred pounds. I mean, he's a big boy. Jamil Burrow um, came in against Georgia, against Tennessee, and against Mississippi State. He had eleven snaps against Georgia, and then you know what happened after that game? After Tennessee, that was Ismail Sapsher hitting the transfer portal, and I, I kind of wanted. Wonder if Jamil Burrow's getting in there along with Jamir and Lathan just recently has kind of and Tim Smith really has kind of been the writing on the wall that those guys are better than Is Sopshire. I don't know that for sure, but you know, when those freshmen are jumping over him, maybe that's what led to Sopshire dipping out. I'm not sure, but just kind of the writing on the wall and piecing things together. All right, last guy we're gonna talk about in this freshman report is Sam Johnson. Um, freshman punter. Started against Missouri, had three punts for 117 yards, average of 45 yards. All right, it was all right. And against Texas A&M, punted twice, average of 33 yards. So kind of, you know, backwards in that sense. Started against Ole Miss, had one punt for 40 yards, and started against UGA, four punts for 131 yards, which was an average of 32.8 and, um, you know, from there on, we've seen Charlie Scott take over the punting situation. So clearly Alabama is still looking for a punter that can, you know, do what they need to do. Flip the field, get you inside the 20. So we'll continue to see the progression of Sam Johnson. But we got an early taste of him during the beginning of the season. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video presentation uh, regarding the Alabama true freshman. I really hope you hit the thumbs up button. You like and subscribe. It means so much to me if you guys hit that thumbs up button. Um, please do that right now before we bail out. And we appreciate you guys subscribing to our channel right here on BamaInsider.com. Alabama Crimson Tide, they're open this weekend. And then uh, following this weekend, they will take on LSU and Baton Rouge. We got a ton more coverage coming your way right here on BamaInsider.com. From beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com.